Hi, welcome to another episode of NRVTA Influenced. I'm sitting here with Mike and Susan, RV bloggers. How's it going, Todd? Oh, it's going all right. So typically on, on the uh, my uh, channel here, we have people ask questions about the RVs, and it's usually uh, pretty technical. Sometimes I'll, I'll get off uh, into other topics, but you guys, you know, you, you live the lifestyle, you do a lot of, um, uh, I guess, technical training uh, and and provide information. So what we wanted to do is kind of put the two together and say, hey, give us some information about, um, you know, your lifestyle, what you guys do, and let's just go ahead and, you know, just start off. You said, um, you know, that you, well, I'm sorry, you guys have a big class A, correct? We do. There's a lot of questions that people have about how do you choose what type of RV, right? Class A, class B, fifth wheel. Yeah. Walk us through um, your decision making on getting the Class A. Well, I guess um, for us, we were thinking that we are going to be traveling a lot more. We had a we had a Class C that was just 24 feet long, and it's you know too small to spend you know months and months in there for us. Right. So we thought it would be great to get a Class A RV um, and use that as our home base wherever we go. We tow our Jeep behind us, and then okay. we can use that to travel around and you know, sightsee and explore and all those kinds of things, which for us has been a, a major game changer. When right. we drove around our Class C, that was our only form of transportation. No toad. Right. No toad. And when we knew that we were going to be traveling more, the idea came about, like, could we physically do that in this space that we had in the sea? And even though it fit our lifestyle as weekenders or vacationers, it was a, a little too cramped for you know more time on the road so I pretty much gave him an ultimatum <laughs> oh yeah that's really how the decision yeah. came about it was like <laughs> we're either going to renovate this so it suits our lifestyle a little bit better or we have to get something else so I got something else <laughs> <laughs> well renovate something that's too short already or too small yeah. already. right okay. yeah so uh, let me ask you this um, you guys are not full-timers but how long you know typically are your trips you guys decide to go out. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it for a season? Is it for a week? Is it for a weekend? Typically, how long are you guys out? Yeah, in the past, it's been a lot of weekends or one or two week trips and things along those lines. But now we're at a point where we're out on the road for right. months at a time. Right. I guess we're more like three quarter timers. So we'll, we'll be on the road right now. We're on like a two and a half month trip. We'll get home in time for the holidays. My daughter's going to have a baby. We'll be home for all that, and then we'll be back out on the road again in the spring, and we'll be out for months at a time. You have your home base, yeah. and now you're free to go. Right. Yes, best of both worlds. Now, um, what what locations do you guys prefer? Do you like the beach? Do you like the um, uh, mountains? Uh, get off in the woods? Do you like you know to be around a lot of other RVers, or do you like to be well, in solitude? I think the beauty of RVing is that you can do all of that. Yeah. Because we really do. I mean, That's the we, reason I was asking, what do you like? Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> I mean, I love the beach, but I also like the solitude of going out into the forest or the mountains and just, you know, listening to crickets and birds chirping. And, you know, I, I really don't think I have a favorite because I like being able to change my location, my scenery, you know, it just whatever mood suits us the best. All right. So me and Stephanie, we kind of have a debate. Every place we go, she wants to buy a house there. <laughs> she wants to move there. And I look at it and go, there's so many other places we haven't been yet. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, say you, you're out for a couple months, you do your you, know, you do your travels, you come back. Do you ever instantly go, we need to go back there next year? Or do you instantly go, you know what, that was great, fabulous, we got pictures. Now we're looking for something new. I'm move on. I'm like right. looking for yeah. something. We new are always all the time. looking forward. Yeah. So right. I mean, we we'll have favorite places that we went, depending on whatever state or location. But I never want to stay in the same stay in the same place twice. Yep. I want to find something else, different right. campground, different you know. Location. I think that is the allure uh, to the RV lifestyle. We, you know, yes, you can go over there, but that you know, that was my reply to Stephanie all the time is. Well, that's what we do have a house here. It's called an RV. Right. Yeah. We have a house there, and we have a house there. Right. Yep. Anywhere you want to be. Right. Is there any place you wouldn't take it? Like, you, there's a travel you want to do, and you're like, I'm not sure we'll do this in this big Class A. Well, the only thing that is a bit of a concern with our Class A would be um, 
really winter travel or rent, winter camping. Our, our rig is so big that to be able to use propane to heat it, it's just really not practical. So um, that's one limitation that we have. Now, we don't really like cold weather anyway, so we're kind of okay with that. We're yeah. perfectly happy Chasing not sunshine. just camping in the snow. We've certainly done it. We've driven in the snow. Yes. Um, but it's just not practical in our particular rig. But what we also want to do is we want to get a rooftop tent for the Jeep. Yes. So if we do go someplace and there is deeper location that we want to get to that's off grid and we can't, we, we're going to have the flexibility of being able to do that. So yep. that's uh, that's on our radar. There you go. Yeah. That's kind of something new. Now you got to pack up everything in the Jeep, figure out what you need there. Right. Yep. And say, hey, can we'll have we a do go this bag. for a, <laughs> two or three days? You know, right. Can, can we make it? If not, then we have to come back into home base. Yes. Well, that's pretty cool. So let me ask you this uh, again. I'm just going to make it wide open. What are what are some tips and tricks, or you know, just any advice that you would like to impart upon uh, the audience at this point? Well, we you know, in our channel, we do a lot of RV tours on YouTube. We write a lot of articles for beginners. We really cater to folks that are brand new to RVing, or looking to buy an RV, things along those lines. And one of our, um, we feel like one of our best pieces of advice is. Folks ask us all the time, what RV should I buy? A travel trailer or a Class C or a Class B? We say rent before you buy. You know, go ahead and try one. Take it out on the road, see how you like it. We did that before we bought our first RV, and we learned a ton about what we liked about the RV and what we didn't like about the RV. For example, we had a wet bath in the one we rented. We knew we did not ever want to have a wet bath in our RV when we bought one. Now, for those that don't know, what, what is a wet bath? So a wet bath is where your toilet and your shower are all in the same room. So every time you take a shower, later on, if you want to use the bathroom, you have to get in there and dry it all out. And if you're not perfectly level when you park, now your your bathroom floor could have two inches of water in it. Right. So it's, it's something to think about. And uh, we sure learned our lesson with mm -hmm. it, but we're glad we did. I mean, right. if we didn't know that going in. We wouldn't in, have known that. Yeah. We could have bought the wrong RV, and now a year later, you're you know you're trading it or trying to sell it. And um, RVs typically, you know, with the exception of the past two years, don't go up in value. So uh, it's important to try to get the right one, you know, right off the bat if you can. So you do tours. So what else? You know, you guys have a magazine. It's actually kind of successful out there. What, uh, you know, to the viewer here who may not know about your magazine, what, mm. what you know, talk about, you know, going through different RVs, what else could they gain from reading your magazine? Well, in our magazine, we try to feature a very well-known RVer on the front cover of the magazine every single month. And for a lot of folks that are out there, you know, YouTube is how you learn about RVing. And so, um, in addition to being able to see these folks on YouTube, we do a little interview with them in the magazine so you can really learn about them, why they became an RVer, what they're up to out there in the world, and they give really good tips and advice as well. So that's a fun aspect of the magazine. And then we have different departments that we devote to every kind of RVer. So we have a towable trailer section, a drivable motorhome section, and then we have camper vans and truck campers. And so whatever kind of RVer you are, we try to provide as much you know, useful and helpful information as, as we can. And then we'll also have locations. Yeah. You know, could be beach locations or uh, locations with water parks or amusement parks. Yeah. So we try to give that, you know, are we there yet section where, you know, people can learn where to go. Now, is that done by you specifically or do you have others? You know, when you're talking about the locations. So we have people that will contribute that information for us. Yeah. You know, we, we, we don't have all of that knowledge built up yet. <laughs> to me, that's, that's, that's like you hire everyone else to do that and say, you know what, I'm going to be the on-location right. yeah. 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 <laughs> photographer. Yep. Yeah. Well, Mike, Susan, I definitely appreciate the information. I know the audience definitely appreciates the information. One more time, you're, uh, where, where can people find you guys? Well, you can find us on YouTube. We are the RV Blogger channel there. You can also find us at our website, which is rvblogger.com. And then from there, in the top menu bar, you can find RV Camping Magazine, and you can subscribe for free. So we hope to see everyone there and take advantage of the magazine. Mm -hmm. We try to provide it as a service to the RV community. Oh, awesome. So much. Uh, thank you so much for being here. And that's another episode of NRVTA Influenced. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Todd. <laughs>